everyone, today I'm going to teach you how to make a giant whiteboard for under $60. So I'm a small business strategist and I whiteboard all the time with my clients and for my own business, as you can see, I'm currently working on something for my own business behind me. And I get asked all the time how I made this because a whiteboard like this can cost thousands of dollars. This is eight foot by four foot and it is super simple once you know how to do it. It took me a very long time to figure out logistically how to make this. The reason being is because you can't actually screw through the actual whiteboard material. And so I decided to create a floating frame. So, and the frame actually allows me to take out the panel board anytime I need to and replace it to, to get a fresh whiteboard surface. Okay, so what you're gonna need is a panel board. This is a 1 8 inch thick um, composite material that you can get at a home improvement store. And then the front is coated with a shiny white coating and it resembles a whiteboard and works similarly to a whiteboard. Important to note though, it's not the same quality so you have to be careful with it. Um, try and keep your hands off of it or the oils over time will reduce the effectiveness of it and it can scratch. Also, I had to look through, I don't know, maybe about 20 of these at the hardware store. They're stacked on top of each other so they get scratched and they get dinged and so just pick a good one and they're only $15 so you can replace it when you need to especially with the way that I mount these on the wall okay so $15 for the smooth white panel board I got this at Lowe's also I created a free guide that has all the schematics the step-by-steps drawings on it of how this works and so if you want to get that that will be um, the link will be below but you can also go to www.stacykessler.me forward slash whiteboard and it will be there as well. Okay, so besides the panel board, you are going to need to get molding. If it comes in eight foot lengths, that's what I did my, uh, my example and the instructions with, you're gonna need four of them. Uh, you can get any kind you want. This is a two and a half inch wide. It's actually fake. It's MDF and it's got a uh, coating around it, but I liked the look of it and it was real lightweight. Um, and so I decided to go with this one. So you'll need, if it's eight inch lengths, you're gonna need four of those. And then you're gonna get pine, uh, just, one and an eighth inch wide pine. So it'll, it's something that looks just like this, except it's uh, only one and a quarter inch wide. So about the width of a paint stick. I don't have any left because you're gonna actually use it all, but you're gonna have some of the molding left. So you're gonna need three of those eight foot length sections. Then you're also gonna need 14 screws I like using wood screws. Wood screws have a flat edge and a kind of a funnel shape, so it sinks right flush with the wood, and I think that looks best for this project. I did not cover the holes, especially because, but you could if you used uh, actual wood molding, you could fill in the holes and paint it the same, but for simplicity's sake, I mean, I think it looks pretty good. Um, I'll show you what it looks like with the, with the nail holes. You can't, I mean, there's, there's 14 of these around, so I think it looks totally fine. Okay, so you're gonna need 14 wood screws. Then you're going to need anchors that fit with those wood screws. And I don't remember the exact dimensions I got uh, cause they don't have them anymore, but I think like a inch and a half maybe, probably two, inch, two inches max, otherwise it's gonna go too far into your wall because the thickness of the molding is not that great. So get anchors that work for your wall, whether that's plaster or uh, drywall or concrete, they're gonna be different types of anchors. Make sure they match your screws. And then you're gonna need, uh, so an electric drill with a Phillips head drill bit and then, or driver. And then you're gonna need two different drill bits. So the one can just be a skinny. You can see it's pretty skinny. Um, it's gotta be smaller than the nail hole and it can be a lot smaller. This is just a precaution so you don't crack your molding. <clears throat> 
This one, however, is a bigger one, and this is gonna have to be a specific size. You don't want it too large or too small because this is gonna create the pilot hole or the hole for the uh, anchor that goes in your wall. So the, the panel board is about 20 pounds, and so you definitely want to have some support. It's pretty big. Um, and uh, on the label for the anchors you get, it'll normally tell you what size bit. The common one is like 3 18ths and stuff like that. Um, sometimes they even come with a bit. Uh, one pro tip is you can actually put tape over it so that when you're drilling the hole into the wall it actually stops it doesn't go further than you need it to be so you can align um, how long that is with how long the anchor is and then you'll need a tape measure a pencil a hammer just to hammer in the um, the anchors you'll need some tape I prefer painters tape uh, the thicker kind is going to work uh, well for the, if you only have one, this is the best one to have, but you can make do with the others. Masking tape will work in a pinch too. Um, you want the tape to come off without leaving a residue, so that's why we're not going to use duct tape or packaging tape. You're going to want to level. Ideally one of these longer ones, you could also use a laser level or a leveling chalk string. But if you have only one of the shorter ones, you can make it work. It's, you're just going to have to be more careful when you're plotting out the line for this because a little bit off is going to look a lot off when it's carried out over the course of eight feet. So you'll just need to be a little bit more diligent in marking the lines. Okay, so how this is going to work, let me do a short demonstration for you here. Okay, if this is your molding and this this piece of wood is going to be a hidden support behind the molding and the whiteboard i'm just going to use a piece of paper <laughs> as a demonstration is going to sit on it so what you're going to see from the front is this but behind it it's actually sitting and obviously both of these will be a little thicker, but it's sitting on that piece and being held in by the molding. And the, um, sorry, this is a little bit cumbersome to hold. Okay, like this. So the support will actually be hidden behind the molding from the front. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna teach you how to make. Okay, so the first step is you're going to take your molding of your choice and uh, all of the dimensions that I do in the instructions are based on this sizing. And again, the links to these products are there, but this is two and a half inches wide. Um, so pro tip, use tape to mark where you're gonna cut um, because it helps with splintering and then you can mark on the tape instead of on the wood. Uh, so you are going to take two of these and you're gonna cut three inches off the end. So these are eight feet, 96 inches. So you'll be left with 93 inches. And it's important to note that these, if you get eight foot sections, this is only long enough to do this square design. Oops, I don't know if you can see that. It doesn't have a corner miter cut like you would see on like a picture frame. And that's just because you would have to get 12 foot sections. So it's just simplicity and cost savings. But you could definitely do that if you want, if you have the right equipment. Um, you can cut this with, best as a table saw. Uh, you can also use a circular saw or a hand saw in a pinch. Um, and then uh, I do a little sanding afterwards just to kind of smooth out the edges. So two of them, 93 inches. Two of them should end up being 50 inches. So you'll cut 43 inches off the end, which is why I have this scrap to show you. Uh, and one pro tip is the, the width of the blade is actually going to take away from the cut. And so what I like to do is I like to do a line and then I like to put the edge of the blade, like if my finger was the blade, like the edge of it on the line with the good side that I'm going to keep being here so that when this cuts through it and takes away from the width of it. It's taking the width off of the bad part. Okay, so just a little pro tip for you there. Um, we, uh, because we didn't know the exact dimensions of this, I didn't sit down and do the math. Uh, I figured it out for you afterwards. Ours isn't like perfectly flush, but if you do this right, yours is gonna be perfectly flush and look even more beautiful than mine. Okay, so now you're gonna take these um, long pieces that you have 
These are gonna be eight feet as well, eight foot pine, uh, eight, eighth in inch thick and one and an eighth inch wide. And then you are going to leave two of them just as they are. And then two of them you're gonna cut in half so that they are 48 inches long each. Then you're gonna mark pilot holes. So on the molding, so if this is your piece of molding, uh, again, this is on the diagram for the bottom pieces, the longer 93 inch pieces. Um, and I like to mark, I like to put the painter's tape and mark on there and then drill through that and then remove the tape. Again, it helps with splintering and then I don't have to mark on the wood. So this is going to be a half inch from the bottom and one inch from the end. And along the bottom, you're gonna do a hole like this on each end, and then you're going to do two evenly spaced in the middle for support. All of them are going to be a half inch from the end, and that's important so that when this is behind it, see how that's centered with it? You're actually gonna be drilling through both. If you were to center it, you would miss the support wood with your screw. And so this is simplifying it, and you're only putting one hole through both of them. On the, you're gonna do the same thing for the smaller supports on the side, one inch, one inch, but you're only gonna put one right in the middle. Again, how far apart these are, I have in the diagram, so you can see that um, if you download that. So we've got those, and then let's see if there's anything else. I think we're ready to assemble. Okay, this works best with three people. Let me repeat, three people. <laughs> Uh, you might not have access to three people. You can probably do it too. You're just gonna have to be a little bit more careful and agile. You're gonna want a step stool for every single person to uh, do the top piece and for the person drilling, especially even to do the top on the, um, on the side pieces because you're gonna be holding this up against the wall. And if you can see this, like if I'm just standing on my feet, this is hard to get pressure, but if I'm taller, I can get better pressure against it. So when someone's drilling, um, it's held in place a little bit better. Okay, so now we're gonna assemble. So what I recommend doing is taking your tape and mapping out where you want it to go on the wall. I did mine 30 inches off the bottom of the floor. This board is four inches tall, and you can see like I can write on the entire thing. And that's why I, I'm, f I'm five foot five. So you can adjust it based on who's using it, kids, someone taller, but if you're around my height, five foot five, and you wanna maximize and be able to write on the whole thing, I would do it 30 inches off the ground. The end size with all of these is going to be two inches larger than eight foot by four foot. So it'll be, what is that? 50 inches by 98 inches. Um, you don't have to tape it out totally perfect, but you will need to know where the bottom is gonna go. That's the most important thing. So you've taped this out. So let me just show the bottom. We're gonna start with the bottom, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your level and your pencil and you, let's pretend this was tape. You're actually going to mark along this whole bottom line, making sure that it's level. Again, this is the only time, if you do it right, this is the only time you're gonna level, okay? So do it right, do a line all the way across. Then you're going to take your pieces, one of the longer 93 inch pieces, and the full eight inch piece of this, okay? So how, let me show you on this side, well, that's a bad cut, okay. So basically how it's gonna work, uh, the other thing you can do to help make this easier is on the long pieces, the 93 inch pieces, put a mark on here that's one and a half inches down on both sides. And that's the amount of overhang you're gonna have with the molding. So you can actually see how to center the molding, okay? Because there's gonna be some overlap. All right, so if this is the corner, bring this a little bit closer. Okay, so this is basically how it looks underneath. Can you see that? So that's how you're gonna screw it on. So you're gonna have this centered, uh, an inch and a half overhang on each, and then you're gonna have two people hold this against the wall with the bottom of it flush with the line that you just drew so that it can be level. And then you're gonna screw through 
with the small drill the four holes that you marked before. Two on the ends, two in the middle, and you're gonna go all the way through to both woods and into the wall, okay? Once you've done that, you can remove it, and then you're gonna switch your drill bit to the larger one. So you're gonna go to the small holes that you made in the wall, and you're going to drill right into them with this larger bit, and then once you're done, you'll hammer in your anchors into those four holes. If you hit wood, if you hit a stud, while you're doing this, you do not need to put an anchor in. Otherwise, you should put an anchor in. Okay, so now that you've got all the holes done, now change over your electric drill to the Phillips head driver. And take your wood screws, have the people hold it back up again. And now you're gonna drill the screws through. So pro tip to be able to realign the holes is to take your original small drill bit, put it through the hole. But you could do this, probably easiest to do it in a center one first because that'll kind of hold the weight a little bit and then you're just moving the ends up or down to align it. So you put it through the hole that you made and you make sure it goes all the way through. And then on the other side, if it's going through here on the other side, it's gonna go into the anchor. And then that means you're lined up. Then remove this and put the, the screw in instead. I'm sure there's an easier way to do this. I'm not in construction, but I'm pretty handy. Um, and this seemed to work pretty well. Okay, so now you've got the bottom mold on. So now what you're gonna do is you're going to pick up the panel board, try not to get your hands all over it too much, and you're going to set it on the frame and center it. Then you will take, if this is your whiteboard, you're gonna take the other long piece of molding and you're going to set it right on top. So if I was doing this up top, I would, Behind this, this is set right on top of the whiteboard, flush with it, okay? Then you'll take your other long piece of molding and you'll put it right over the top. This time the holes that you marked should be towards the top. So the holes that are a half inch away should always be a half inch from the outside, closer to the outside. So if you have enough people, you can leave the whiteboard in. This is the time to get out your step stool. So everyone's standing on a step stool to get a better center of gravity. And then you're gonna do the same thing. Small pilot hole, remove it. Larger holes, anchors, put this back. Line it back up with the holes using the drill bit if you need to and then put in the screws So once you've done that now you're gonna have your whiteboard held up with the upper and lower molding And it's time to do the ends and so this is the 50 inch long piece So you see it's going kind of on the outside and then you're going to have your two 48 inch pieces here um, let me actually show you what it looks like on the end. Let's see if you can get me to see this. Okay. Do you see what that looks like? So that, those are the pieces behind that are holding up the whiteboard. You can't really see these, but if you are going to see them or you're really particular, you could get uh, three instead of getting three of these you could get four of these and you could cut the instead of cutting them 48 inches you could cut them 50 inches so that they fully fall behind the full molding and you don't have that little gap in the corner but you can't see mine my door opens and it kind of blocks it so i'm fine with it um okay so then you're going to put both of the sides on in the same way make sure your whiteboard is centered um at to the edges of the uh to the pine board and then uh, put the sides on. The great part about this is that anytime if you need to replace this, you can just take off, depending on the angle that you can pull them out, you might need to take off one or two of these side moldings to actually pull the whiteboard out and you can put a new piece in. Uh, the, the boards are four inches wide. They fit perfectly flat in the bottom of a pickup truck. 
a normal bed um, and that worked great for transporting this home without it because it is very thin so you got to be really careful if it's bumpy or long so we don't have very far to go so we just set it in the back I kept an eye on it when we drove home and nothing was cracked nothing was damaged which was good uh, okay so basically there is going to be so this piece is slightly wider than the whiteboard is going to be, which means the whiteboard could, can you see this, could move a little bit. I mean, it's not, it's not attached to the wall, right? So if you want to minimize that movement, you're gonna wanna minimize the gap that's here. And so what you can do, I mean, this is not anything fancy. You can just take a little piece of uh, paper, cardstock, cardboard, just keep folding it over on itself um, until it's the right width, the right thickness to split the difference of what's left. And then literally just kind of, like if this was a piece here, I would cut it so that you can't see it. And then I would shove just a couple pieces around the outside and that'll just hold it in and prevent the board from wiggling a little bit when you write on it. Uh, there you have it, you guys. That is how to make your $60 DIY giant eight foot by four foot whiteboard, which is awesome, let me tell you. I definitely use mine a lot. Okay, a few tips for maintaining your board. Use high quality whiteboard markers, Expo or whatever brand that you wanna use. There are a couple of um, colors even within Expo and with other brands, I've noticed that come out like really thick and dark and those I've noticed do not erase well on, on here or on any whiteboard really. So if you end up getting one of those of those in the pack, you're either gonna have to erase quickly or just throw it out and don't use it. Um, also, sometimes you'll get a color that's really light and doesn't work well on this or any whiteboard. I don't know why, but, uh, but anyways, just regular whiteboard markers, um, regular dry erasers. So this is by uh, U-Brand from Target. It's like four or five bucks. It's my favorite whiteboard eraser. The only downside is you can't be very accurate because of these little things if you just want to erase a little bit. So then I just keep an Expo rag so I can get in the nooks and crannies. Um, I don't like using the liquid cleaner. I don't think it's necessary. It smells awful. It's horrible chemical. And I'm not actually sure it's good for the longevity of this, especially because it's slightly more porous than a regular whiteboard's gonna be. If you don't leave the markers on too long, um, you should have no problem erasing it dry. That should not be an issue with you. Also, don't erase with your fingers. Try not to touch it. Again, the oils from your fingers are going to reduce the ability for you to um, erase. Over time, your board will start ghosting, which means when you wipe it off, you can still see some of the marker. I've been using this for a year and a half now, very, very regularly. You can see how well this writes, and you can see how well it erases. So, no issues there. I have noticed some very, very small scratches. Um, they were probably there before or happened while we were doing this, and now the marker just kind of uh, <laughs> fills it in, so it's a little bit more noticeable, but it's really not that bad at all. All right, so I hope that was helpful. Um, Again, www.stacykessler.me forward slash whiteboard to get the downloadable guide with all of the instructions, the diagrams, the dimensions, and links to the product. Um, and I would love to see your photos of your finished whiteboard and how this worked for you. And if you figured out a better way to do this than I did, I would love to hear it. But um, this was super helpful for me and I hope it's helpful for you. All right, have fun whiteboarding, guys.